Hello, everyone. How are you today? Are you ready for a story? A whistling good idea. That is going to be today's story. The author of the story is Rahul Raghavan and the illustrator is Ravi Gupta. And the publisher is Pratham Books. May we turn the cooker off after three whistles, okay? Ma says. Ma is going to the market to buy vegetables for dinner. Ma is going to the market to buy vegetables. She's asking Nivi if she can switch off the cooker after three whistles. Nivi makes a face. Thump! She puts her book down. Boom. She sticks her tongue out at the cooker. Nibi is unhappy. She's probably reading a book and she didn't want to be disturbed. So she, she puts her book down and sticks her tongue out because she is unhappy that she is being disturbed. Nibi taps her foot on the floor. She waits and waits for the whistle to blow. She's getting impatient. She's waiting for the three whistles to happen. All of a sudden, she has an idea. As she was waiting for the whistles, she suddenly gets this idea. Let us see what her idea is. Nibi picks up the rolling pin and places it close to the gas knob. She arranges a row of tomatoes and potatoes behind it. Looks like she has some fun ideas. Let's see. She picks up a rolling pin. Rolling pin is something that you use to make rotis, chapatis or puris that you roll with. So that's called a rolling pin. So she puts that near the, the gas knob at an incline or at a slope. After that, she places a few potatoes and tomatoes. The rasam and dal laden is next. Nibi places it carefully on the edge of the shelf above the cooker. So next, she's starting to arrange other things. Now, first comes the ladle. A ladle is like a huge spoon, hemispherical part at the end, which is used for serving rasam or sambar or soup, anything which is a liquid. That ladle, she puts it on the shelf, which is just above the cooker. She then makes five of Nani spoons stand up. These are the ones Nani uses to sip her watery kitchen. Then she picks up five of Nani's spoons. Nani is grandmother, right? So the spoons that Nani uses to have her kitchidi, she puts that next to the ladle. She arranges them this way, right next to each other. Finally, Nibi places her favorite plastic ball right above the spout of the pressure cooker. So at last, what, what is the final thing that she keeps? It's a, a plastic ball that she keeps right above the, the whistle of the cooker. Ah, looks like she has made something really fun. The ball moves a little. A little more. The ball rolls down the third time. Nibi jumps, claps, and whistles herself. What has she done now? She's done something fantastic. So when the 
whistle of the cooker goes it moves the ball this is a plastic ball and it's very light right so the steam that comes out from the cooker has so much energy that it starts moving this light plastic ball towards the spoons so after the three whistles the ball starts rolling and starts hitting the spoons the ball hits the spoons the spoons fall on the ladle the ladle swings off the shelf blong so the ball hits the spoons each of them fall on the other spoons and finally the spoons fall on the ladle and the ladle falls down from the shelf with a plong sound the ladle hits the potatoes the potatoes roll into the tomatoes the tomatoes crash into the rolling pin the rolling pin hits the knob of the stove third so it is setting a sequence of events the ladle that fell down now hits the potatoes so the potatoes roll onto the next one until they reach the tomatoes the potato hits the tomatoes and the to tomatoes roll and hit the tomato which is adjacent to that finally the last tomato hits the rolling pin which is at a at an angle so the rolling pin then falls down hitting the gas knob turning it off the knob turns the stove switches off nevi opens the pressure cooker carefully inside it is yummy perfectly cooked rice so the rolling pin had switched off the gas stove so after the pressure is completely cooled down she opens and checks to see if the rice is cooked properly and the rice is cooked very nicely nevi goes back to reading her book happy so after all this adventure she goes back to her book build your own genius machine nevi builds a type of machine called the rube goldberg machine this is a machine that works on the principle of cause and effect this is what happens when you hit a coin with a striker on the carrom board and it in turn smashes into another causing the second coin to land in a pocket in a rube goldberg machine a series of objects that carry out simple tasks work together to meet a common goal in a very complex way sure it's simpler to do things the easy way but building a machine to do them is more fun so what nivi had built is called a rube goldberg machine so how does it work it works by the principle of cause and effect what is the cause in nivi's uh, machine the cooker whistle which lets out the steam was the first cause what happened the steam had so much energy and it had caused the the light plastic ball to roll that is the effect the cause was the steam the effect was the ball rolling after that each of the sequences have their own cause and effect uh, in the second step it was the rolling ball which was the cause and the effect was the spoons falling down one on top of the other 
And the third step, the spoons were the cause and the effect was the ladle falling down from the top of the, uh, the shelf. After that, what happened? The ladle caused the potatoes to roll. That was the effect. And then the potatoes caused the tomatoes to roll. Tomatoes rolling was the effect and the cause was the potato rolling. And finally, the tomatoes caused the rolling pin to fall down on the gas stove, turning it off. It would have been very simple for Nivi to just switch off the gas, just waiting for three whistles to happen, right? Very simple. But this was more fun, right? She devised something extremely fun and a very innovative thing that she had designed. So this is a fun way to do it. So Rube Goldberg machines are usually, you can do, do those tasks very, very simple way. You don't have to do this very complicated way to do it. But the complicated way makes it a lot more fun. Another example that you would have seen for cause and effect is when you play a carom board. What happens? You are hitting the striker, right? So the cause is you hitting the striker and the effect is the striker moving. But it is not just the striker. The striker will go and hit another coin, right? So that will be the cause and the effect will be the second coin moving and probably finally landing in the pocket. So there is also a cause and effect. Try your hand at building your own Rube Goldberg machine to drop a teaspoon. Here is how. You will need one thin book rolled up as a cylinder, two smooth long sticks for a slope, two thick books, two rulers, one marker, one eraser, one ball, three notebooks, one light plastic jar, a bundle of string, one teaspoon, one vessel, and one smooth bead. So these are all the things that you would need to make a very simple Rube Goldberg machine. What are we going to make it do? It is going to drop a teaspoon onto a vessel. Let's see how we can plan and do it. This is how we can set it up. Okay, this is the thin rolled notebook, which when you slide it onto the two long sticks, which are at a slope, it will fall down, right? It will roll and fall down and hit the books that are kept here. Okay, let us see the sequence, how it goes. Roll the cylinder down the slope. The cylinder hits two books placed standing up. They fall on the ruler which is balanced on the marker. This in turn taps the ball. The ball hits the three notebooks. They land on the end of the second ruler balanced on the eraser. The jar placed on the other end of the ruler is attached to the piece of string. The string is looped around the smooth beam above. The free end of the string is tied to the spoon. The jar rises when the third notebook falls on the ruler. The string falls down, dropping the spoon into the vessel. So what happens? First, we roll the, the notebook that has been rolled into a, a cylinder, the thin notebook that we roll it onto the two sticks which are kept at a, at a slope. They'll come and hit the two books and the books will fall down. What will it fall on? Fall on a ruler. Ruler is a scale. How is the scale placed? It's like a seesaw. Underneath is a, is a marker. So when, it, when the book falls on one end of 
the ruler the other end has the ball so the ball will fall down and start rolling and the ball will go hit the series of notebooks that are kept the notebooks will fall down so what will the notebooks fall down on on another ruler underneath it is a an eraser so you can keep anything that you have in hand so they uh, this is just an example so here they have kept an eraser so the notebooks will fall on the second ruler or scale so on the other end of the scale is a a plastic jar okay so on the plastic underneath the plastic jar they have kept a string and the uh, string is looped on a a smooth beam above and at the other end of the string is the the final teaspoon that's tied okay and underneath it is a vessel for the teaspoon to drop so when the notebooks fall on the scale what happens it's again another seesaw right when one falls down that the other has to go up and this goes up and the um plastic jar falls down when the plastic jar falls down the the thread which was underneath becomes loose so it it can now move freely so that moves and the spoon which is which acts as a weight pulls it down making the spoon to fall down onto the vessel so the finally the teaspoon is just goes into the vessel so that was the aim of this uh, rube gold machine right so that is achieved by doing this entire scheme with the things that you already have we didn't have too many difficult words in today's story but let us look at few of them that we saw in the story ladle a large long handled spoon with a cup shaped bowl used for serving liquid food items like rasam sambar etc genius a very clever or a creative person cylinder a solid geometrical figure the the picture that you see on the screen is that of a cylinder try these questions can you draw a simple rube goldberg machine that you want to make rube goldberg machines are so much fun to design do you know which field of science helps us to know why and how these machines work the way it does i hope you enjoyed today's story until next time this is bye from soumya